Hello there, very good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime News on TV1. I'm Martin Satinis and for the News First Team, let's start off with a look at your headlines. Gotabe Rajapaksa officially resigns from presidency. Announcement of vacancy in office of president to be officially informed to parliament tomorrow. Fast unto death launched opposite the temple trees. Diesel shipment to reach Sri Lankan shores tonight. Petrol shipment expected next week. Will schools reopen on Monday? On your lead story this afternoon, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe was sworn in as the acting president in the presence of Chief Justice Jayanta Jayasuriya. Vikramasinghe was appointed as the acting president following the resignation of Gotabe Rajapaksa. Moving along, Speaker Mahinda Yapa Abhay announced today that President Gotabe Rajapaksa has st officially stepped down. Sri Lanka Prajachantrika Samajavadi Janaraji Andukami Vastavit is utter ikka. As per the Article 38, 1 of the Constitution of Democratic Republic of Sri Lanka, I have received the letter of resignation of President Gotabe Rajapaksa. Accordingly, Gotabe Rajapaksa has stepped down legally from his post from the 14th of July 2022. The constitutional process to elect a new president will commence from this moment. Until the process is complete, the duties and functions of the president will be discharged by the Prime Minister as per the provisions of the Constitution. Appointment of the new president will take place as with the provisions of the Presidential Elections Act and Article 40 of the Constitution of Sri Lanka. I have made it a priority to process this as soon as possible. Sri Lanka is one of the oldest democracies in South Asia. It is not only important locally, but also internationally that this process is carried out with utmost transparency in a democratic manner. Therefore, I urge all party leaders, government officials and the forces to extend their fullest support in carrying out this process. I request the public to provide us with a peaceful environment so that the members of the parliament can participate in this meeting and serve the country according to their conscience. I intend to complete this process within seven days. Therefore, this is to inform all members of parliament that parliament will convene on the 16th of July 2022 and I request all parliamentarians to be present. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Gota Gogama Occupy Golf Face protest site came alive following the speaker's announcement on the presidency. This is how the protesters at Gota Gogama in Golf Face, Colombo celebrated the official resignation of President Gota Be Rajapaksa. The Gota Gogama at Gaul also celebrated the resignation of President Gota Be Rajapaksa in the following manner. A fast on to death was launched by the protesters at the No Deal Gama near the temple trees, demanding the resignation of acting president Ranil Vikramasinghe. <laughs> Gotabe Rajapaksa did not resign, he was ousted by the people. Another slogan within this struggle is that Ranil Vikramasinghe must resign too. If Ranil believes he can continue as the president, he must know that the power of the people has defeated all other forces. If he wishes to remain president through conspiracies, all we can say is, let's wait and watch what happens. The Ceylon Petroleum Corporation says a vessel carrying 40,000 metric tons of diesel will reach Sri Lankan shores tonight. 
Incidentally, this is the first fuel tanker in a month to reach Sri Lanka. According to the chairman of the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, Wise Mohammed, payment in full has been settled for the latest shipment of diesel, while several more consignments of diesel and petrol are scheduled to arrive in the country over the next week. However, the fuel shortage in the country continues to burden the masses even today. An uneasy situation was reported from the IOC filling station in Anuradhapura this morning. According to our correspondent, the situation arose when people in queue voiced their annoyance to a group of outsiders who attempt to join the queue. Police intervened to ease the tensions. The program is in place to issue fuel for those in the health sector on Friday each week. It was carried out today as well. The Ministry of Health says fuel will be issued to workers in the health sector from 109 specified filling stations. Accordingly, 20 litres of fuel will be issued to motor cars, 8 litres for three-wheelers and 6 litres for motorcycles. Health workers have queued up at many filling stations island-wide to obtain fuel. A queue of health workers opposite the Sipetko filling station in Horana was witnessed since last night. Another queue formed by health workers was seen since last night opposite the IOC filling station in Matara. A lengthy queue had formed opposite the Sipetko filling station in Rikilagaskada following a rumour that spread of a possible fuel consignment. The IOC filling station in Nochiagama is the sole filling station available for those in Rajangane, Nochiagama, Tambuttegama, Talava and Gallava. Farmers, traders and other citizens were burdened heavily as a result of the filling station running out of fuel four days ago. Meanwhile, distribution of domestic gas cylinders is taking place today as well. Little Gas Lanka Private Limited noted 50,000 gas cylinders are due to be distributed today while there is a continuous supply for the Colombo district. Little further requested the general public to refrain from purchasing gas cylinders for a high price. In more local news, while the academic activities at schools were interrupted due to the COVID-19 pandemic over the past three years, Yet again, schools are closed due to the fuel crisis. Ceylon Teachers Union questions from authorities as to when will the schools be reopened. No clear instructions are issued by the Ministry of Education on reopening schools. The opportunity for education is not provided by this government. In this crisis, there is no program to bring the principals, teachers and students to schools. We know school services are not considered in obtaining fuel on a priority basis. It is a severe problem. Education is not a priority for these people. They have not provided fuel either. They have not decided on anything about the syllabus. As a result, we are making a request to the Secretary of the Ministry of Education on the validity of the previously issued statement that the schools will be reopened on the 18th. Parliament Speaker Mahinda Yapa Abe Vardana has told the party leaders that the Parliament will meet on the 20th of July to elect a new president. He hold the party leaders uh, meeting that nomination will be called for the post of president on the 19th of July. And then on the 20th of July, on an election will be held. The announcement of vacancy in the office of president will be officially informed to the parliament tomorrow. Another phase of the Divisavia program to distribute dry rations among families in need was held in the Kalutara district today. The program is sponsored by the LOLC Holdings.
The 43rd Brigade made the following remarks regarding the current situation in the country. The people had to oust this ruler by taking measures beyond the constitution because he dragged out 5.5 million families to the streets by acting according to his own merit, going above and beyond the constitution of the country. No one has the right to surround government institutions and act outside the constitution of the country. We allow the system to be carried forward according to the constitution and the lawmakers must keep in mind the sacrifices made by the people at the Aragalia when making decisions. We believe that the leader coming into power should be someone with the support of all parties. We must establish a council comprising parliamentarians as well as thought leaders and professionals of the Aragalia in order to take this country forward. Apart from the speaker, the rest of the 224 parliamentarians should be held accountable for the performance of government ministries. And we must agree on a set of policies. Everyone must be open regarding their policies without playing high and seek. Some say they are against the IMF. They are not bringing forward any other options. First, we must decide whether we are moving forward with the IMF and the roadmap for our future actions. We have important decisions to make regarding government institutions, especially government financial institutions. We must take those decisions with the approval of the people. In one of your headline-making stories, the Parliament Speaker Mahinda Yapa Abewadana has told party leaders that the Parliament will meet on the 20th of July to elect a new president. He told the party leaders that nominations will be called for the post of president on the 19th of July and then on the 20th of July an election will be held. The announcement of vacancy in the office of president will be officially informed to the Parliament tomorrow. The issue at hand is not the post of Prime Minister. The issue is on the presidency. Ranil Vikramasinghe will be sworn in as the acting president. Parliament will convene tomorrow and the Speaker will announce the vacant presidency. Nominations will be called for on Tuesday or Wednesday and the election will take place on either Thursday or Friday. The Prime Minister will have to be appointed by the President who is elected. Earlier, Ranil Vikramasinghe had said that based on the party leader's agreement to appoint a Prime Minister, then he would step down. He was then the Prime Minister. Now he is the acting president. The next step is to appoint a president by an election in parliament. There is no discussion for the post of prime minister. We do not have any for now. We will have a look at who steps forward for the post. He is the acting president and there is no issue in that. To confirm that, an election must lead to a new president. That will take a few days. Within the next seven days, a president must be appointed. We have not decided on that, but we are discussing it. I cannot mention names. We are not naming Sajid Premadasa. We are naming the opposition leader. An opposition leader is considered the alternative government. Therefore, we won't speak of Sajid Premadasa but of the post of opposition leader. There is a democratic view that whoever is the opposition leader must be nominated for the post. Do not assume that the Sri Lanka Freedom Party nominated Sajid Prevadasa. That is not the case. Many opposition parties have supported him. We believe it is wise to award power to the opposition leader to become the Prime Minister to stabilize the country for the next few months.
You witness what happened when incapable people are appointed. First, let's appoint him and see. If people with capabilities were appointed, the country would be in a better place. From that, we bring to a close this edition of Lunchtime News on TV1. For details of the stories and much more, simply log on to our website, www.newsfirst.lk. I'm Martin Satinis. You take care and have a good day.